There's drains and waterlogged areas on most farms in the wet tropics. Water running off farms and through the soil can be high in nitrate and make its way into freshwater systems and eventually out to the Great Barrier Reef. With slight modifications and management, we can turn these boggy bits and drains into mini wetlands. And with the help of soil organisms, chemistry and plants, waterlogged areas work to take the nitrogen out of the water through a process called denitrification. Plants feed carbon to the soil and water in the wetland. Microbes in this low oxygen environment are looking for oxygen. Through various stages, they strip out the oxygen from the nitrate and the nitrogen gas, N2, is released harmlessly back to the atmosphere. Did you know that almost 80% of the air we breathe is nitrogen? My name is Fernanda, I'm a wetland ecologist from Griffith University. So the definition of a wetland is a site that is waterlogged, that means that it has water most of the time, and that has vegetation adapted to live in these conditions. So if you can think of a drain that has water most of the year and it has vegetation on it, that's basically what you would describe as a man-made wetland. We're at our constructed wetland site in the Johnston catchment. We build a microbial community to promote denitrification. I think for the growers it's for the starters, it's peace of mind that they're doing something to mitigate potential pollutants entering the waterways and um, developing ecosystems on their farm to create a better environment. In this case, we're trying to mimic the conditions that you find in a natural wetlands, which is you know, plants, boggy soils, uh, lots of carbon in the soil, and do that in a wetlands to serve a purpose, and in this case is reducing nitrogen in our waterways. The drain that we ended up installing on Gavin's farm comes straight out of urban development. It's a stormwater drain designed to handle high flows of water. In periods of low flow, the central part of the drain acts as an in-drain wetland, so we're creating the uh, right type of ecosystem there for microbes to live in and denitrify the water. And in periods of high flow, the water will actually spill over the um, benches on either side of the drain and will hopefully filter out some of that sediment as well before it leaves the property. And really, it just led to us enhancing the shape of the drains. And just by doing that was all we needed to make a difference to water quality. The depth um, is very important because now that we understand denitrification occurs mostly when you combine these three ingredients. And these are the soil, the plants, the water. Um, so you have to maximize that area, that contact area. So if you have a very big wetland and it's just a hole, really the area, it's very small where you have these three conditions, which is just at the edges of it. So the ideal condition would to have like a swamp. So if you have a big property, probably the most um, cost-effective thing to do is to use your main drain to turn it into some sort of wetland. So because that main drain, it probably has a lot of the characteristics that we need. It has water flowing all the time, and it has like high nitrate concentrations because all everything that it's been draining is concentrated into that one spot. So if you add the retention time and the vegetation, you can probably create this sort of wetland treatment that will reduce the nitrogen in the waterways. In combination with good farming practices, constructed wetlands and vegetated drains are another tool in the toolbox to help us protect the Great Barrier Reef.